Good day grade 10s. In today's lesson we're going to be looking at resistors in parallel. So what we mean by resistors in parallel is that the circuit actually splits okay and the resistors are connected in parallel. So if I had to draw this right there is ammeter 1 current splits we're going to put a second ammeter over here with a resistor R1 and then we're going to put another little ammeter, A3, with resistor 2, R2. And then we are going to put another ammeter over here, A4. Okay. And yes, we're connecting it like that. It looks terrible. Okay. So, in fact, it looks terrible. I'm just going to quickly erase that line and make it line up nicely. Okay. So now, do you see that what is happening is that a current is going to come along here from the positive. It's going to come along here, go through to here. Now, at this point here, now I know that I've laid it out looking like this, but what has actually happened is that if you had to look at it in real life, it effectively is doing this. So that would be resistor 1, and that would be resistor two and then it was split again. So even though this looks like this is a much further line down here the, along the resistance two line, effectively if you look at it like that it's actually very easy to see that the current is going to split. Now if these resistors are the same in size the current splits equally. So let's say for example we've got four amps coming along here. So the four amp gets to this point okay which is the same as that point. It then splits and then what's going to happen is you're going to end up with two amps traveling along the resistor 1 layer and we've got two amps traveling along resistor 2 wire. Everybody happy with that? Now it gets to this point here. Now that point there is the equivalent of that point. So the electrons have been flowing along here and they've been flowing along here. They get yet exactly the same amount of time. So again we're going to end up with 4 amps. So do you see that we can say that the total current in this is equal to A1 which equals A4 because they're in the main circuit but that equals A2 plus A3. So this time the parallel resistors are current dividers. Current dividers. Okay, now let's pretend, let's just change color so that we've got something else interesting. And let's put some voltmeters in. So let's put a V total in here, V terminal power resistance, I mean terminal, then a V1, and let's put a V2. Now, what you've got to think about is the fact that this current, this voltmeter, goes along here, measures along, measures along. At this point here, half the current is going through here. So these electrons, if I drew a little red line along here, these little electrons are only going along this circuit, whereas if I choose another color, I could draw this. And these electrons are traveling only through this circuit. Okay. So do you understand that the electrons that chose to go or that were pulled along this side only travel through this resistor and the electrons that were going along this side only, oh, why did that not change color? Let's try again. Only go through this resistor. So this voltmeter is measuring the amount of work it takes to get through this resistor and this voltmeter is measuring the amount it takes to get to this resistor. This voltmeter measures the total amount of energy it takes per charge to get through the circuit. Therefore, V total is going to equal V1 which is going to equal V2. Right, so let's summarize that. The voltage is constant across the resistors in parallel. The current is split across the branches. The resistors in parallel are current dividers, as we mentioned. So therefore, current is, can be measured as I1 plus I2 plus I3, etc. The more resistors in parallel, 
the smaller the resistance. Therefore, we calculate the resistance using this. Now listen, this formula, okay, we will show you in grade 11 how they get this formula. All you need to know is the more resistors we have in parallel, the easier it is for the electrons to get through to the other side because they've got more opportunities. So the more resistors that we have in parallel, the easier it is for the electrons to get through to the other side. Therefore, the more resistors in parallel, the smaller the resistance. The equation, therefore, that we use is 1 over Rp, which equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, etc. Okay, so let's do an example. If I say have a battery and I have an ammeter, just so that you can use to seeing it, and I have a 2 ohm resistor, let's just use the same as what we did in the series. So you can see the difference, and this is a 3 ohm resistor. And we put them, whoopsie, in parallel like that. Then you can see that we know that 1 over R parallel equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. So if we do that nice and quickly, we've got 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3. Now you can pop it in your calculator, but I really hope you don't. I really hope you do the basic maths. The common denominator is 6, 2 goes into 6 3 times, 3 times 1 is 3, plus 3 goes into 6 twice, 2 times 1 is 2, so therefore this is 5 over 6, but that's 1 over R parallel. So R parallel, the total resistance of this parallel component is actually 6 divided by 5 which is, if you put in your calculator, 6 divided by 5, it comes to 1 point, if you don't know it already, it comes to 1.2 ohms. Now what's interesting about this, and you need to remember this because it's a good way to check, your total resistance in parallel is always going to be smaller than your smallest resistance. So you can see that 1.2 is smaller than your 2 ohms, so therefore you can see it's nice, much smaller, nice and easy. Now, two resistors in parallel, there's a little bit of a cheat that we can use. For two resistors in parallel, there's a shortcut equation which says that RP is the product over the sum. So it's resistance 1 times resistance 2 divided by resistance 1 plus resistance 2. So let's look at that example again. Let's just write the equation down. So it says RP is equal to R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2, right, remember R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2. So if we look at our example again that we had, now just to check that it did actually work, again we've got our cells and we've got our 2 ohm, I apologize for my terrible drawing skills, actually I'm a little bit better on the board than I am on this electronic pad, a little bit and this is 3 ohms, right, they're in parallel just like the last example, but now this one, so what do we have? We know that this is going to be R1 and that one is going to be R2. So if we do this, use this equation, we've got 2 times 3 over 2 plus 3, which is 6 over 5, which is 1.2 ohms. So it does work. So that's a nice shortcut that you can use, so learn that shortcut. But remember you can only use it if you've only got two resistors in parallel. Right, thank you grade 10s. I hope that you've learned how to use your calculate resistance in parallel and how they work. And in the next lesson we're actually going to do a little bit more of a complicated mixed example. Have a great day. Thank mm -hmm. you.